Hey guys, today I wanted to address why most of the magic community views me as a toxic individual. I was talking to a wedge supporter on Facebook. He had left some very, very bad comments on my videos. And we actually connected on Facebook. We had a long chat. And just like the chat, one of the chats that I always remember is a chat I had with a guy on 4chan. And I asked him, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you trying to... At that point, people believed I worked at Darium's Games. And they pretty much ruined Darium's chatting platform on his website. Now, it did give him a lot of traffic. But I'm sure that he would rather have not had dealt with the stress. And I'm grateful that he stood by me at that time. Now, the conversation with the 4chan individual was that the majority of people on 4chan probably don't play Magic. They're not part of the community. They're just here to see the drama. They're just here to see the fire, if you will. Because fire is very beautiful. And if it's not this fire, it'll be some other fire. And this one is not particularly interesting for them. They, they will move on to setting other things on fire. Humans online are very destructive, especially if they are anonymous. Now, this guy, he used his real YouTube handle, and I was able to find him on Facebook, and we had a chat. The 4chan guy was very, very important in my development. Because I did try to be a relatively positive channel up till that point. But then I realized that that's not what we needed in our community. We needed a place for, for people to be negative. Um, one of the things I asked the guy on Facebook who was a big Weds fan. Um, I asked him many things. And some of them really angered him. Uh, so it was a guy who was a Weds fan. He said that you're not part of the Magic community. He has been sick for three years, so he has not had a job for a long time. And he has a lot of free time to, you know, leave comments and be very mean online. Uh, part one is if you give people free time, like the whole country of Greece, a lot of their young people don't have work. I think 60% of their young people are unemployed. They will just graffiti things. They will start destroying stuff. Um, any government does not want a high unemployment rate because uh, giving citizens time to not to think and destroy stuff, that's what they're going to do. Which may or may not be good. Not every single rebellion or was bad historically, right? Or not every single revolution was bad historically long term the discussion i had with him kind of came down to the nature and the reason that you're seeing screenshots like this it affects mary affects owen uh, affects me affects everyone else i would much rather be real and have people hate me than be fake and have people love me because that's what i learned from going to nyu and William Mary Law School was it's possible for me to be fake and have friends, tons and tons of friends. When I was in middle school and elementary school and high school, I had one true friend, one true friend, but we did everything together. We hung out, we played video games, we played Pokemon, magic, obviously we're big into magic. Now I had other friends, but they're kind of like school friends, friends that are your friends. They're friends with you in school, but if you saw them in the mall, they would never say hi to you and they would ignore you and they would never invite you to go to the mall to hang out. I, I was very much, and that's kind of the psychology, and that's why I am the way I am. But my first year at NYU, I became incredibly popular my first week. I cannot tell you why. I think a lot of times you have a little bit of luck, and a lot of times it's a lot of luck. Um, the stars aligned and... I was very popular. I taught 14 classes as an undergrad. I was the teaching assistant to 14 different classes. Uh, I was the most popular teaching assistant NYU probably has ever had as an undergrad. I can openly say that. I taught 14 
That's still the record. I taught 14 in three and a half years. So I graduated half a year early. I got to go to Italy. I got to go to China, which is not a big deal because I was born there. But I went uh, Nanjing for the summer, the, my first summer of uh, NYU. I got to go to, in law school, I went to New Orleans for the Hurricane Katrina uh, situation. And I went to uh, Africa. I was like, hmm, I, at Ghana for the 50-year celebration. Uh, the only place I didn't get to go to, oh, I went to Italy, Rome, uh, France with NYU. Uh, the only place I didn't get to go to that I really wanted to go with my friends was Egypt because they had a civil war at the time. When you have a thousand friends or a hundred thousand subscribers or a hundred thousand friends, you don't have time for anyone. You actually have no friends. So I traded my one best friend, my only one true friend, for a bunch of richer, wealthier, better off friends. A bunch of them. Uh, there was a rave every single night I could have gone to. There were house parties all the time. And I did this for my freshman, my sophomore, and my junior. Even when I went to law school, I was the head of my fraternity. So being popular meant a lot to me. And that's one of the things he commented that this need to be popular was going to destroy me and so and so. So this is not my biggest social media. My LinkedIn is much bigger than this YouTube channel in terms of views, clicks, comments, followers, all of that. It's just bigger. Um, it's much bigger. I much rather have four or five close friends than four to five hundred people who I never talk to, who donate me money and who when you have a few friends um, in the community, and I do, in this magic community, I do have a f few very close friends who are YouTubers. That's enough. You don't need to be greedy. You get to show who you truly are. By definition, we're not perfect individuals. There are things, maybe my political beliefs and my political ideology, that half of you guys, maybe even more than half because you're magic players, don't believe. There are things... In including that I think people should have jobs and people should work as hard as they can. I came from a very poor background and I worked myself up. I have biases. People accuse me of being biased all the time. And I say, yeah, because that's my life experience. That's my personal views. And I share those biases. They drip in these videos. And that is what people call toxic. I hate cheaters. I hate people who steal. I hate people who scam other people. And the reason I do, the reason I really dislike it um, is due to how I grew up and due to who I am and what my ethics are. Nobody is exactly the same. But when you want to promote a mass market item like Magic the Gathering, you have to make it very simple. Hey, I'm always positive. I am sponsored by Card Kingdom. I'm sponsored by TCG Player. I'm... There's nothing wrong with magic. The judges are fine, even though bad things have happened. The players never cheat. The Wizard of Coast never makes an, a mistake on Mythic Editions. Everyone gets their Mythic Edition on time and is happy. I'd rather live in reality and have a very few friends than live in a set where I have a lot of friends, but none of them actually like me because they don't know who I am. I think that's the problem. So Mary is very interesting because I think she's like me. And I haven't found many YouTubers or MTG. Uh, Christine Sprankle is not like me. Uh, Jeremy is kind of like me, but he's a little out there. He's even more out there than I am, especially right now. I'm not PR. I'm not going to say nice things about Magic Pros. You guys know that. I'm not going to say nice things about somebody who scams other people, you know this. I'm very focused on certain people because they represent to me my worst experiences in life. Uh, for instance, I grew up very poor and when we only had, we literally had $50, we had a relative, kind of like the mana source, who didn't work. It's not even a relative, it's a friend. Let's say we had a friend, we're not blood related who didn't work, and all he did was scam other people for their money, including my parents. 
including my, again, we were just so poor back then, yet he would sell us old pots and pans, and you might be like, oh, maybe you need a pots and pans, but we didn't know better. We don't know how much a pot and pan is. Um, I remember when I was very young, and uh, we ate at McDonald's, which was a lot cheaper than it is today, but still relatively expensive as a percentage of income, and he would always order food, or, and he would take his kids to Toys R Us, and because my parents were very traditional, they would always buy toys for his kids and not for us, my sister and I, because, you know, in Chinese culture, you have to be very subservient to your guests. You have to honor your guests. And he would do this all the time. So his kids, again, he didn't have a job, but his kids had better toys from them. My parents would always buy his kids' toys. Already one time we went to visit him. Whenever they visited us at our home, we would pay for the food. We would make the food, and he would eat. So when one time we went to visit him in New Jersey, he had moved to New Jersey at that point, um, they took us to a place to pay for the whole grocery bill. They took us to a place and they did grocery shopping and they made my parents pay for it. They e-bagged. I mean, it wasn't e-bag, it was begging. From the very, after that experience, and I, I had that experience when I was five or six, um, and that was when we were incredibly poor, I realized that I really don't like people who beg. I don't, if you watch my other channel, you know I don't like panhandlers. Obviously, I don't like panhandlers. I don't like people who pretend that their father has died when really they use someone else's dad. I don't like people who rob other people. I don't like people who steal mail. I especially don't like people who cheat to win money. Um, because I grew up, when you grow up poor, everyone's cheating you. Everyone is cheating you. The whole system is designed that you don't have any retribution. You can't call anyone out. You're a nobody. No one cares. The police don't care. Your neighborhood apartment manager doesn't care. Um, one of the years, again, at the really poor apartment, we had our Christmas presents stolen. And the security guard... I think it was a boss college or something. I don't know. Maybe a Macy's uh, tried to help us find our gifts back, and we it couldn't. We were very poor. That was one of our first Christmases that I think my dad had a small bonus at the time that we could buy gifts for each other. Um, that wasn't just quarters that you put in the piggy bank that you can't take out. That's kind of like a fake gift. Here's a here's a five dollars. You put it in your piggy bank. And then you can't take it out, but then the family takes it out due to emergency. So really, was it a good birthday gift? Probably not. Um, and the security guard actually bought me a Batman game. Uh, Batman Forever had just come out that year. I remember it, and I just loved the game. Uh, using his own income, and he wasn't rich. You could tell he was not rich. I remember like thinking, this guy's probably making the same as my parents were making at the time. So I've seen the very best in people and the very worst in people. When you're poor, when you don't, when you're poor, and people treat you very poorly, you know that. And when you get wealthier, which I am now, I cannot break that mindset. No matter how hard I try, no matter how bubbly I can be, I can fake it very well, but I cannot break that mindset of seeing people scam me over and over again. And even when I go on like a date, a blind date, which I talk about on my other channel, it's hard because in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, so you're a single mom and you want to, you want me to pay for your kid's education, their schooling and stuff. And I should be more trust. I should be like, okay, you know, we'll work on that. We'll work that out. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, they're going to try to take advantage of me. This sounds like a bad deal. So, and to the point, Warren Buffett is the exact same way. He has a McDonald's life card that's only good in Nebraska. And then he went to Hong Kong and he was using coupons at McDonald's because he is a good deal. Because he likes good deals. He's been cheap and frugal all his life. Just because he became a billionaire doesn't mean he doesn't eat at McDonald's. Or use coupons to eat at McDonald's with Bill Gates. Which is a very famous... And that's not fake. He does it all the time. That's just who he is. And that's just who I am. So love me, hate me, whatever you think about me, um, 
I'm not going to change. I'm that kid who grew up and saw the very worst than people, just the worst than people. I saw people beg and beg and beg and our parents and my parents gave and gave and gave because they were new to the country and they probably didn't know better. Um, I saw kids who my parents would buy toys for when I couldn't even have a toy. I saw people steal from us. I saw people rob us. I saw our Christmas presents go away, but I also saw that a security guard paid for, and that's why I, I foster dogs, I donate a lot via accent. I don't talk about fostering a pit bull, I do it. And then I find it at home using whatever social media I have available to me. I sent a dog to Switzerland because I found someone who was interested in that dog. And it actually happened. This happened two years ago. It was unbelievable that someone would travel from Switzerland to Houston to pick up a, to adopt a foster dog. But they did it. Yeah. It's probably one of my proudest moments uh, in 2017. I didn't have many proud moments, but that was definitely uh, one of them. Anyway, bye guys.